the Beast had apparently had a busy morning. It appears that they had earlier gone into another shop nearby, but had only got away with a whip and an employee of two. The search was later found near the shop. Mrs. Carroll, however, said it was one of the rare and final occasions. She brought weekend takings into the shop on a Monday morning, waiting for the bank to open. The money had been stored well hidden. Well, we're only a small business owner, and this is very, very difficult because it means I've had to contact creditors and ask them to perhaps give me extended credit. And business is bad for everybody at present. It's only just starting to pick up. And it really means that they have to suffer as well as me because I can't pay them. And uh, I really feel that these people that come in and steal money from small shopkeepers don't realise just what they're doing. The message I have is, please, I have a lot of friends out there in business in this city. Change your method. Go and get yourself a night safe if you have to, or find a much more secure spot in the shop to put money. It will happen again. The police officers have told us that. It will happen again, simply because these people know where to go. You don't have to tell them. It's like a billion instinct. And if you can just change your method, and put the money somewhere else until such time that you can get to the bank or the building society and, and take it off your hands. Yes, we've done something revolutionary. When we inherited the problem at the end of 1983, we decided that the town should take over the club and it should be run, run uh, professionally. So we set up to form a company. We formed a, a uh, non-public company, a private company, and uh, 45 or six of us uh, have become shareholders of that company. Uh, there's been quite a big con contribution to it, and uh, that's therefore the Cessnock Rugby League Propriety Limited, which it is now, will control football in, the, in, in Cessna. On a solid financial footing, and I believe employing a full-time person to, to run the game. On a very, very solid financial footing, they will, our players will be paid in full for the 1984 season on Sunday. They, there will be enough capital in the bank to pay, pay them for the 1940, uh, 1985 season, so anyone playing for Cessna knows they're going to be paid from now on. We will have the professional acumen in the... Uh, in the club where we're going to employ a uh, uh, permanently a secretary promoter in the club to raise money from v various means. Uh, he's also there to re uh, uh, enthuse people and bring them back to rugby league in the city. Because we had to make the feeling of the whole situation. 
Now, this is mm-hmm. my rescue work is voluntary and dangerous, but it's about the demographic hundreds of lives that have been lost. After 57 years at Abermain, the South Maitland Mines Rescue Station has shifted to Singleton. The decision was made to centralise the operations of the units in the mining area, and with a number of pits closing around Chestnut, that meant moving further west. But the work done out of Abermain will not be forgotten, as long as this tapestry hangs in the Chestnut City Library. Red meat has fallen by 33% in the past. The reason is our health conscious society. Articles have been written and we've been told that red meat is bad for us if we have a cholesterol problem. Many, on the advice of their doctors, have dropped red meat from their diet. But according to Mr. Russell Luckcock from the Meat Industry Authority, we've been fed information that may be relevant in the US, but it's inaccurate here. I think the problem is we face with red meat kind of things, particularly is particularly in the health aspect. There's a lot of um, anti feeling against red meat because of its so-called toughness. But the fat figures have come from uh, um, the USA, where the beef is quite substantially fat on our beef. And uh, what's happened is the diet, chickens and so forth, have uh, brought US data out here and, and tried to apply it out here. It just doesn't fit. The drop in red meat consumption has hit the industry hard. Butchers claim that their income has been cut by a third. And so at last night's protest meeting, they were eager to hear how they could win back that share of the market. They need to have the statistics and information to get their customers back by. And the meat industry authorities research claims that red meat is good for you if the visible fat is taken off. The butchers aren't prepared to allow their income to be loaded away. They've decided to fight fire with fire and are going to try to persuade the public to start eating more red meat again. The police say that the majority of the information that comes from Operation Noah has been about marijuana, but they've also received some important leads on origins and distribution of some of the harder drugs in the region, like cocaine and heroin. Detectives work through the day and they call from people in the hunt with information on drugs. And now the hard work of collating and following up leads must begin. It's been predicted that this may take up to six months. The confidence of a high success rate. The aim of Operation Noah is to encourage the public to ring the police with information on drugs and to apprehend the manufacturers distributors and growers of illegal drugs. It's the first time Operation Noah has been tried in New South Wales, and the police in Newcastle are more than pleased with the results. Much more successful than I think the uh, sales of these ever expected. Now, have you had any sales at all? 293 to date. I'd say that there'd be none within five which would be classed as a first at all. And there's been already for uh, how many people do you expect to meet the operation now? If half the information is as good as we think it is, uh, possibly in the 40 or 50 months. And this will include... The different drummer sent out a stress signal about 7.45 this morning in which it said it was sinking. Shortly after, a flare was fired. Once rescue services had located the yacht's position, the Westpac rescue helicopter, led by Chief Chief John Sting, intercepted the vessel. The swift side of the vessel approximately 10 miles off Stockton Bight, uh, at approximately uh, quarter to nine this morning. Uh, we were called out at about eight o'clock. What condition was it in? When we uh, first saw the yacht uh, that was swallowing around a lot in the, in the heavy swell, it was making headway, but we believe it was very short on fuel, and also the, uh, the main sails were all stripped down, and we believe it also had steering problems. Did you start any people? Yes, there were three people on board at that time that we could see. Uh, they didn't appear to be in any distress at all. The 
police rescue launch Doyle made contact with the yacht shortly after and towed it into the police wall at Newcastle Harbour. First time we've seen you in person in Newcastle, but uh, of course we, we spotted you on the telly winning a gold medal just a couple of months back. Yes, it was uh, nearly three months now, but um, certainly the highlight of my career is something that I won't forget for a long time. It's sort of three months, it's gone quite quickly actually, it doesn't seem that long ago. We'll have Kevin Nichols of course because he lives in Sydney up here, and I know uh, he hadn't come down at the time, it was about a month after the Games, uh, you're starting to, to believe it. Uh, in the bank, the gold medal locked up, and uh, you've got a future in the game. Well, it's uh, something that no one can take off us now. We've got the Olympic gold medal, but uh, not really. I, you can't put in the bank, I suppose. We're not we're not making much money of it financially. We're not doing that well out of it. We're unfortunately not like Carl Lewis, but uh, it's been quite good. Uh, we've been we're, we're now going around Australia, being invited to all the big racing carnivals and uh, just like this one here at Newcastle, this is my first major track race for the season. I think this is the first major carnival for the season and I'll be continuing on and uh, I'll be interstate nearly every weekend from now right through to February. So it's been very good uh, for me because uh, I'm able to go away and see. I bet I was pretty pleased at home when the gold medal came home. I, I remember years ago in the 60s seeing your father race here in a six day race and he was a top bloke, right? I, I, I guess he was as thrilled as you were. Yes, he was really wrapped. He, you know, it was uh, probably one of the best days as far as he's concerned with cycling. He was unfortunate uh, when he was young. He started cycling at the age of 15 as a professional, so he, he didn't give himself the opportunity to ever represent Australia. But uh, he sort of supported me and helped me a lot over the years, and uh, he was really thrilled with it. We got Kevin Nichols' reaction to the funny bike. How did you react when you when you really saw what they were made up of? They, they were an advantage to ride, weren't they? Well, not so much the bikes. I uh, didn't get any actual advantage out of their bikes. Their bikes looked a little bit different. They had smaller front wheels, but they did get a lot of advantage out of the disc wheels. And uh, riding against the American British wheels, we weren't. we were a little bit apprehensive at first as to, to um, how we'd perform against them because we'd never seen them before. But after uh, riding the qualifying rounds and uh, getting through to the final, we were quite confident because we'd still performed better than the Americans in the faster times on standard equipment and uh, 
That's basically it. Doesn't matter what your angle is, the times that you ride it counts. Certainly does, particularly for kid riding. It's the yes. times everything, isn't it? Yes. What are they going to do about the the funny wheels, the disc wheels? Well, I heard last weekend that they've been banned. I'm not sure. But, uh, I, was, I was in Victoria racing last weekend. And I was told that they have been banned. Am I correct in saying it's a it's a cycle wheel with a with a weighted section that sort of gets once you get going, the thing will keep rolling on? Yeah, they have the width. The wheel is a solid disc, so you don't have the spokes standing there, which um, there's a lot less drag. But they also are extremely heavy, and uh, once they pick up speed, the, the, the weight spinning it the momentum uh, tends to keep them going and uh, we ride very very small tyres which have over 200 pounds per square inch in them on these wheels so the x weight doesn't create any extra drag on the track and uh, they just have this big advantage. Did you manage to get a ride on one? No I didn't but uh, a few wheels have been imported to Australia now and the power in Tasmania and I haven't seen them myself but I've been told the weight of one wheel is actually more than a normal bike and wheel together yeah. so they're very very heavy. It's going the opposite way to what you thought cycling was. Yeah. Everyone's um, getting the featherweight stuff aren't they? Well road racing for instance you must have light equipment because climbing hills the weight is not then at all but uh, when you're doing the, the, um, the flat racing on the track the weight doesn't mean anything because once you've got it up and going that's it, it just keeps on going. Michael great to have you Andy and welcome to Newcastle. Thanks very much. Thank you. 
But the men have uh, have pointed out that uh, that they're not in the high risk group for uh, blood donation, and they felt that they ought to do their bit in uh, in making sure that our blood supplies are, are adequate. We find in Sydney that most people with epilepsy really do enjoy such a group because they're able to talk to others with epilepsy who can really understand what it feels like to have the epilepsy. And from calls that we've had in the Newcastle area, we've had the same response. Do you feel that epileptics are able to cope with their problem? I think one of the main problems we find is people have low self-esteem, lacking confidence. A lot of that is to do with the fact that they have difficulty finding employment or they may be pleased at school if they're of that age group or they're finding just difficulties in their marital situation. It's going to be tonight, all that for mental health information support service.